So you've got your game running, everything's looking really good, and your character, as you can see from mine here, is moving around the screen. You're feeling rather pleased with yourself, except what happens is that you move to the edge of the screen and your character disappears. Or we come off the top of the screen here, and again, the character disappears. And really, you don't want that. So when you get to the edge of the screen, there's a couple of options available, depending on what you want your game to do. You can make it so that the character stops, you can't go any further, and the same on the other side. So basically the character is bounded by the size of the screen. Or you can make it so that they scroll off one side and appear on the other, as though they've wrapped around the screen. Now both of these are common solutions to particular problems. And we're going to have a look at how we work both of them. So if I come into my program here and we have a look at the code, you can see that I've got some variables, x and y. I've got some code in my update routine, which is basically just moving the x and y values or changing the x and y values depending on the button I've pressed. And down here, we're clearing the screen, drawing the map, and drawing the sprite. So hopefully there's nothing in here that is particularly um, difficult for any comprehension of, of what's going on. There's an earlier video that takes you through how to set this sort of thing up and how to get something moving if, if this appears to be quite confusing. But I'm hoping at this stage that you can see what's going on here. So let's have a little think about what's actually going on when we want to start moving around the screen. So as always with Pico 8 we know we have a screen that's naught naught up here and 127 127 down there. So in other words, this edge is 127 for the X. And down here, the Y is 127 down the bottom. So if we've got our little character moving around the screen here, which has an X and a Y value, it moves around in all sorts of different directions until it reaches an edge. So let's deal first of all with the wraparound situation. That is that the character gets to here, comes off the screen, and reappears there. In order to get this to work, we simply need to take the x value, if we're going off this, this side here, in other words, if we're crossing this line, and set the x value of the object to be over here. Okay, so the object's going to come off the screen here when its x is greater than 127, and it's going to reappear over here, setting its x to naught. Okay, and if it went the other way, as soon as its x is less than naught, we would set its x to equal 127. So let's try that. In order to do this, what we've got to do is we've got to ask it, is this value of x greater than 127? And to do that, we have to use an if statement. So if we go back to our um, earlier piece of code, what we can do is we can move into here. So all of this code is going to go into the update routine because we're updating the position. So again, we must make sure we keep update and draw separate. So we're going to update. So we're going to say if x is greater than 127, then x equals naught. End. And if I copy this line, because all programmers copy code, no one ever actually types anything in anymore. I'm going to put it in for the other direction. So it's x less than naught. If it is, then we're going to make x 127. And if we run this, you can see here goes my character off the side and reappears. And again, there. Now, if you watch this really carefully, what you can see is that it seems to jump as the, um, as the character appears here. If you watch carefully, it suddenly jumps. So it goes off this edge and appears to jump into that position. Let me let me show you what I mean. If we if we get this character moving, you ready? So it comes across and it's jumping right in. There's a bit of a disappearance there. You see that, especially if I'm going to the left. There's the character. Oh, it's gone. And his arm has appeared on the right. Okay, so gone. Like that. And that's not very realistic. There's something a bit odd there. Your mind would look at that and think, oh, I don't like the look of that. And this is due to a fact about the sprite. If we look at this particular sprite here and think about it in a bit more detail, the sprite itself is inside a box. 
and this sprite is a simple 8 by 8. But the x and y location of the sprite are here. So when we're moving across the left hand edge and we say is the x value less than naught, that happens as soon as this particular edge, if I just rub this one out here, as soon as this particular edge has moved over like that. And as soon as it does that, it disappears and reappears on this side over here. So that leaves us a bit of a problem. It's not very realistic. So really we want to say only move when x is less than minus 8. So when the whole thing has come off the screen, then we can loop round. So let's have a look at doing that if we can. So we're just going to clear all this stuff off here and we'll see if we can get it to be a little bit more realistic. So remember we said it's going to be less than minus 8. Okay, so let's try running that. So here it comes to the left and you can see now characters disappearing, disappeared, reappears. Going this way, disappears. Oh, now again here it's reappearing in whole. We don't want that. You see on this one where it appears and it starts to appear and you have part of a sprite. Well, going this way, I'd really like the same thing rather than it just appearing in one go. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to say x equals minus 8. And if we now run it, we can move off this side and gently appear there or there. And you see it's a much smoother transition than the one we had before, much, much nicer. Okay, And the same thing is going to apply moving up and down the screen. So I'm just going to put the Y values in. Imagine all I'm going to do is copy this and put the same values in for Y. So we're going to say if Y is bigger than 127, make Y minus 8. And if Y is less than minus 8, make Y equal 127. So when we run it, our character goes up and appears smoothly at the bottom. Okay. Now, if our character was something different, let's say our character was, um, instead of a sprite, it was a circle. Okay. Well, the circle measures its X and Y in the middle. And so there you'd have to work out what the radius was in order to work out what the difference is here to make the object appear more smoothly. Okay, so you need to know what you're dealing with. Equally, if you're dealing with a very big sprite, so you've got some sort of sprite like this, but it's actually spread across four um, sprite segments, then this distance is going to be 16. So you've got to apply a bit of common sense to this and actually do some calculations yourself. You can't just um, blindly put in minus 8 and assume it's all going to work properly. So that's how we make the sprite wrap off the edge of the screen. And of course it's always nice in these situations when you've got a little bit of code like this to maybe cut it out and put it in its own function. So I could call it function wrap, remembering always to end whenever you enter and open a function. And I'm going to paste it in there and then all I have to write in here is wrap. And if I run it, move to the side, it's wrapping perfectly. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out wrap for now so it's not wrapping the code round. Instead I'm going to have a go at something else. What we're going to try this time, if I run it again, is making it so that the sprite can't go any further. So in other words, as soon as the x value gets less than naught, it's going to stop moving. So when we think about this particular one, it's not too difficult, I hope, for you to see what's going to go on. We've got this edge here, which is zero. We've got our sprite. And as soon as the x value of the sprite tries to get less than zero, we're going to set it back to be equal to zero. Okay, and on this side, here's our edge at 127. So as soon as x is greater than 127, so in other words, our sprite has come off the screen here, we're going to shove it back, x equals 127. And it'll be the same for y. So if we go back to our code, Okay, press, let's come in here, press escape. Then we're going to write if x is less than zero, then x equals zero. End. All right, remembering to copy and paste out of sheer laziness. So another one, and another one, another one. 
and we're going to say if x is greater than 127 then make it equal 127 and then these are going to be the y's so it's a y y y and a y there and this one is going to be if x is less than naught uh, sorry if y is less than naught y equals naught if y is greater than 127 y equals 127 so now if we run this and i move up to the edge bang stopped come up to the top stopped i just cannot move off okay however i'm going to move to the right hand side now and oh look at that look there's a hand but it didn't stop again this is a product of the sprite being to uh, or the sprite sorry measuring from this location so that's the point we've measured we stopped it when it was here so here's my robot and the one hand is just over the edge because at this point here that's the x value of the sprite when that gets too big in other words when that moves it just puts it back but it only puts it back to here we need to put it of course all the way back to there so there was a little bit of sprite um, showing so we want the rest of the sprite the other seven pixels to show so when we go back to our code in here we don't want to be setting it to 127 we want to set it to 120 and hopefully now when we run to the edge I need to set both bits to 120 and hopefully now when we run to the edge it gets stopped okay so there's our robot cannot go past it's bounded by the size of the screen okay and that can now be wrapped nicely in a little bit of code so we can take this control x okay we can go function let's say block remember end the function paste that in there's function that so now we can decide what to do now i'm going to block instead so when I run my code, I block, okay? Or I can comment block out, go back to wrap, and again, my code will wrap. And this is a nice easy way of making some boundary effects for your games. Happy programming.